Okay, welcome back to part two. So I'm going to pick up right where I left off. So I was stating that each full moon we've had since around April, you've been gaining clarity and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. There's been some type of um, uh, rebirthing in your emotional space, rebirthing in your finances, a rebirthing in every area of your life that has been gaining momentum and gaining strength since around April. So take a look back um, around the first week of May and see where your mindset was. If you, uh, for those of you who are journalers or you, you know, you write in diaries or, you know, maybe you are the kind that, um, you know, you do several Instagram or Facebook prompts. So go back, you know, on your timeline and see what was your mindset? What were you manifesting? What were you doing around um, April and around that particular full moon and the new moon that we had around that time? So that would have been the new moon in Taurus and the full moon in Scorpio. So just think back. April, May, what did you have going on? What were you manifesting? What were you releasing? What new were you calling into your life pertaining to this situation right here that has now come to fruition, okay? Because I see it clearly. I believe that during that time, um, maybe you had already been out of the relationship. You know, maybe you had just gotten out of that relationship or maybe you were just determined, bound and determined to get your groove back, right? Maybe you were saying, this is it. I am no longer, you know, sitting in the house. I'm going to get out here, you know, get myself seen, you know, and maybe you still went slow about it because I do feel like that, you know, you just tipped your toe into the dating scene. You didn't just jump full in, you know, full throttle. But I believe that was a decision made around April or May, um, either vibrationally or you verbally said this, you verbally manifested that you were going to move forward and put yourself out there. And I believe you did. And um, you've been meeting people. And for some of you, you have met, you have met and been speaking with someone since around that time who has now proven themselves worthy of access to you. Okay. So kudos to you for those of you who are resonating with this portion of the reading. So of course this is part two and I do apologize that um the first the part one, you know, the first part abruptly ended. But if you are just getting on this part, please make sure that you go back and watch part one so it'll all make sense. I know you know I know that goes without saying, but still want to make sure that I do say that you know to go and watch part um one. Okay. And if you hear the music, my neighbor is yeah, so hopefully you guys cannot hear their loud music, okay? Thank you, Sweet Spirit, for giving me more information because I know there is more information to be said on this because I also feel like they're... Okay, so that... <laughs> bless it. So, okay. As I mentioned in part two, in part one, um... Your person is your person is absolutely feeling the the air of their ways. They're feeling the oh my god, I cannot believe that I have effed up. Okay? Many of you and this is feeling more like the women of of you know, of my followers. Many many of you Many of you did put, this is the death card, by the way. Um, many of you did put the husband out, put the boyfriend out, put the baby daddy out. Many of you ended your last relationship very brutally. But I feel like you felt like you had to go that hard. You had to go that route because it was just getting out of hand. It was getting, it was maybe possibly entirely too toxic or you were just not being fed by it, or like I said, maybe this person was controlling, so you felt like you absolutely 1,000% had to do a cold turkey with that relationship, and you put them out. You made them leave. You told them this is it. It is over. Get out, okay? And, you know, let's keep in mind 
that this is Scorpio's energy. The death card is a Plutarian card. It is Scorpio's energy. And I did just say that many of you may have made some type of declaration to yourself um, around the new moon um, in Taurus or that full moon in Scorpio, which is in uh, normally mid, well, beginning to middle May, okay, somewhere, somewhere around that time, it just, it, it changes often, okay, but it is definitely during Taurus season, which is May, okay, so that's, that's why I said that there, there were some um, things, some thoughts, and some words um, that you may have had with yourself verbally or vibrationally during the season of Taurus, which is starts in April and ends around May 19th, May 20th. So think back to that time. But this could have also been when you decided to put this person out. This is when you decided to cut ties completely, okay? And I, if you did not, or if you have not had an opportunity to go back and watch part one yet, I did pick up that your person could be, have been a Capricorn or your person could have been a Cancer, okay? So those are the two energies that I did uh, see um, that, you know, could be your person or it could be your energy, okay? But I did pick up on those two, on those two energies, so... Oh, and, and now that, that this card is out, your person could be a Scorpio as well, okay? So just place the energy where it belongs, okay? And I don't want to leave out Taurus. I don't feel like you're, I don't feel like the person you put out is Taurus. I feel like that I could be talking to Tauruses, okay? Because that's who shares the axis with Scorpio. And since Scorpio uh, is here, right? Now, this isn't Scorpio's card. Scorpio's card is the high priestess. But the death card is ruled by Pluto, and Pluto also rules Scorpio. So, um, and then I also like to bring in, you know, the energies on the axis of uh, the zodiacs that I'm able to pick up on. So, the the energy that would be on the on the axis with this death card would be Taurus. So, I don't feel like your person is a Taurus. I mean, they could be, but I do feel like that I'm speaking to. Tauruses as this is your reading as far as you being the one um, that this is all unfolding for, okay? And in part one, I did also say that many of the cards that came out in the beginning were pentacles, so I knew that I was speaking to earth signs, and of course, Taurus is one of the earth signs, so Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, energy was already in part one, okay? Show me more, show me clearly. But yes, your, your, your person... You know, as mentioned in part one, I believe they are hurt. I believe that they are, it's it's finally kicking in that, that they fucked up. And excuse my French, just straight up. It's finally kicking in and they know that there is no turning back from here. Okay. For those of you who have moved on into something else, they literally cannot believe that they lost their person. Okay, um, there's a song by the singer, the R&B singer Joe, and uh, he states in the song, you dropped your dime and I picked it up. They dropped you and somebody else came through, picked you up, shined you off and saw your brilliance, saw your genius, saw your beauty, saw your worth. So your your ex is, is probably really going through it. Your ex is going through um, a dark night of the soul. I feel like your person, your ex person, um, this was a necessary roughness that they needed to shake them up, to jolt them into knowing how to treat people better, knowing how to be more appreciative, to knowing knowing how to um, knowing how to be in harmony with their mate, knowing how to share responsibility, knowing how to just be a a romantic partner. I believe that you endured someone who probably was very immature but that's water under the bridge right because now you have met someone who sees your worth and they're just honored that that they have access to you they're just honored that that you see them worthy. See, I think they thought they were out of your league, even though it didn't stop them from approaching you. It didn't stop them from, you know, throwing that hook out there and seeing if you were willing to take the bait. And the bait wasn't anything um, um, untrustworthy. So don't don't take that saying and say, oh, you know, well, this person's trying to, you know, catch me for a reason. No, no, no. It's true. It's a really true relationship. It's a really, tr what they're saying to you is true. And then, you know, go back and watch part one so you can, you know, hear all of that good, good stuff. But 
Um, yeah, you, you, you definitely have been, um, you've been caught by someone who wants to do everything that your past person did not do for you. Okay. Cause they see your worth. They see your worth. If there's more, show me and show me clearly. This has not been a easy ride for you either. Okay. I do believe that this, this turbulence did a lot to your self-esteem for those of you who are resonating. Okay. It did a lot to your self-esteem. So for those of you who, who resonated with part one, where I said you probably took three, four years off and you're just now getting back in the dating scene. Um, it took you those three or four years to gain your confidence back, to gain your courage back, to gain, you know, your, your, your self-esteem. I believe being with this person who did not give what you were given, it pulled and tugged on a lot of your, um, it just pulled and tugged on your, 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 your confidence. It pulled and tugged on not just your self-esteem, but how you viewed love. So anyway, you took time out. Not to mention that I did depict that I was speaking to a single mother or a single father. So in the process of trying to be a great mother, um, still trying to be everything. Because look, it's funny how life happens and you still have to be a mom. You still have to be a dad. You still have to be a sister, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, an employee. Uh, you're still trying to, you know, be the best version of yourself while dealing with someone who's pulling so much energy away from you, right? So again, this was not an easy um, journey. However, this is why this card came out because you have a sense of freedom and a sense of liberation and a sense of self again. Okay, so I know why you're moving slow. I know why you laid those rules down to that new person. Like, hey, hey, don't come in here rushing me to try to be nothing. Don't, don't come in here rushing me for sex. Don't come in here rushing me for no commitment because, listen. <laughs> so I, I totally understand this energy here, okay? Totally understand it. Show me more, show me clearly. I would like to get some information about this new person. Show me this new person. I'll take that and this one. Oh, wonderful. So they're coming. Ah, oh, ah, I love this for you. So we have the three of pentacles, another pentacles card. And now we have the five. Ah, oh, listen, the five of pentacles and the three of pentacles. I am... So, okay, because I'm so excited and, and spirit is saying so much right now because of these two cards. Number one, your person is in, your person is coming in. This new person is coming in under the energy of I want to work with you. I want to grow with you. I want to learn from you. I want to teach you some stuff. They're coming in under this energy of planning, teamwork. They're very competent. Whoever your new person is, is very competent. Okay, they're, they're very... I believe they have, it's like y'all are the missing piece for one another. They have what you need. You have what they need. It, it just, it, all the only thing that needed to happen was for y'all to meet one another, right? Y'all just needed to, to group up. And now that you are willing to give them this opportunity, give them this chance, I think you now see that, oh, okay, this is, this is really, this is really what I needed. This is who I needed. You have met, and I don't want to use the word soulmate because I have a different understanding of what a soulmate is versus what other readers and astrologers mean. But I will say this, this is like, it might have this too good to be true. And I said that on part one before I even laid the cards down that you may be going through this phase of, should I let this person in? Is this person the right person for me? Is this really real? Like, oh my God, because I, I, I'm i just now getting back out here. What are the odds that I would meet somebody this good? So I believe that you have met exactly who you need for who you are right now because you've grown, you've matured, you've learned. So you're not who you used to be. And the person that has come into your life now, they match who you are right now. Um, they're there to help build that 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 insecurity. They're help. They're back. They're in to help reestablish and bring in even more confidence. 
They're not, they, they, they have not come in to add to the insecurity. They've come in to give you comfort, trust. And I believe because of how you, when they approached you, go back and watch part one, when they approached you and you started laying out all of these rules, regulations, do's and don'ts, what you're not going to do, it was something about that that they knew immediately that you were the one. Because I feel like the, whoever your new person is, they maybe they've met people in the past before meeting you, they just gave in. I feel like your person's very attractive, so they know that they can have their way with anybody. So when they met you and, and you were not moved by their suave words, you were not moved by their handsomeness or their beauty, they were like, oh, this is my person. They knew that you were their person before you knew that they were your person because you didn't fall for the normal things that people from their past normally fail for, okay? Um, also with this five of pentacles, I feel like, even though they've probably had their way with men, had their way with women, they themselves probably came through some type of hard times too. Or they may have been rejected in the past, even though they were nice looking or had, you know, the money or whatever the case is. You know, not everybody that they approached gave them an opp gave them an opportunity. So they may have been coming off of some type of um, lessons as well um, themselves. Your new person, your new person may for sure dealt with some type of rejection from somebody that they really, really wanted. And none of their smooth talking and again, good looks worked. So it's almost like y'all are both coming off of a singular path and you met each other right on time. Y'all fill in, y'all fill in each other's blanks. Okay. But they, they are definitely uh, coming in to work with you. And I think that, that's one of the things I picked up on earlier is that your past partners, your ex or your past partners were not as active in your relationships as you were. I believe that you were the giver, the doer, the mature, the more mature one, the nurturer. So you gave way more than you got out of your relationships. Okay. Whether it be the, you know, with the ex or just maybe this is a pattern, okay, person, you. Maybe this is a pattern of behavior that you um, noticed and you worked on and said, never again will I extend, overextend, overcompensate, right? So I see a lesson of love for thyself in this for you. And because you got the lesson, here comes this person that it's like your lesson well, the blessing is has manifested as this person who everything that you now learned, they're coming in as that. So you didn't have this understanding of what was trying to take place in your last relationship. You know, you don't learn the lesson until you don't went through the mess, right? So you learned the lesson and now you're leveled up person, your energy, it's like you're on the level, you're on the vibration of this person who's going to come in and be everything that you didn't have in this last person. And I believe that you're being that for them. I can just tell that it is a sense of appreciation. Both of y'all are going to have or have a sense of appreciation for one another. Like I'm saying, you're each other's missing pieces. Show me more, show me clearly if there is more. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is the four, and I'm going to stop with this. I'm going to sit on the bottom of the deck. Okay. Two of, two of swords. I'll, I'll address this in a second. But this is the four of swords. Okay. The four of swords. Now, I like this simply because this lets me know that you can rest assured that this is your person. You can rest assured that this person um, isn't coming in on any oppositional energy. You can rest assured that this person is coming in matching you. <laughs> and you know that they're coming in matching you if they if they took your very uh what's the word? Cuz I you know, I'm telling you in the very beginning you gave them a hard time, but it didn't scare them off. So so your person for one, they are not easily moved, not easily ran off and that shows that you're dealing with somebody who has a lot of strength as well. Somebody who is not um, 
they don't give up easily, right? So you're dealing with a warrior. I wouldn't be surprised if if your person if your person isn't a Leo or a Sag, somebody who just doesn't give up, a, a, a Taurus, okay? Somebody who's not afraid, maybe even an Aries, okay? Whoever whoever your person is, they are someone of character, okay? They are someone of character, and they're not easily shook by challenges, and that's a good thing. That's a those are life skills, okay? Not just good love skills. Those are life skills that they have staying power. No matter what's thrown at them, they know how to stick with what they want, okay? So I like that because, again, that's very reassuring for you. You need to know that they're in it to win it, just like you're in it to win it. So this is an awesome reading, okay? So now the, the two of swords um, being on the bottom of the deck, Normally, this would, you know, talk about somebody who has blocked emotions, right? Somebody who tries to avoid situations because they just don't want to be, they, they don't want to deal with a stalemate type of situation. But I don't believe that this is what this is indicative of in this reading. In my opinion, I believe that you said you're going out on a limb because that's what a fruit is. Okay, blind faith blind faith you decided and i and i see that i'm saying this because both of these cards together in my divine opinion how i read okay shows that you were with with your new person it is something and i said this on part one it is something that they said or something that they did that said that made you trust to go ahead and move forward with them okay something that you something that they did or said that made you say you know what I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to trust my instinct because something about this feels right. Something about this makes me not want to avoid it. Something makes me not want to um, block, you know, their emotions and block my emotions. I want to tether my emotions to theirs and see, you know, what you believe in love. Just, just, just to, just to, it's something about this new person that's making you believe in love again. They have restored, replenished something that made you say yes i know this is my person okay and i depicted all of that in part one before i even laid cards right so just make sure you go back and, and watch part one but this is where i stopped this reading uh, i hope that you resonated if you didn't resonate and you watched it in its, in its entirety i just hope that you did enjoy it otherwise i do appreciate each and every last one of you being here may you receive all that time and energy back deuces